we've been getting a, an interesting insight from engineers and from Herco as to what's here on show at the open house and how good the machines are. But I want to know from, from, from your aspect, because you're hands on here with your cutting tools, how do these machines perform? Well, we've actually got one of the 42 eyes in our workshop in Sheffield as well. So it goes hand in glove when we work with Herco because we know the machines, we know the capabilities and we can really push our tooling and the machines to show them both off really. Okay, I'm going to touch on both the hardware and the software. Let, let's talk about the software first. When you come to do the type of machining you're doing here, which we'll see in a minute, you need a, a control that can handle it, fast processing speeds. Would, yeah. would all those things be uh, what the Herco is? Yeah, the, so the Herco is Windows based system, so you've got a lot of computing power at your fingertips without paying the extra money for upgraded software and hardware on the on the software side but it does really, really well in terms of look ahead and going into corners and the acceleration and deceleration and the moves as well. So. And, and how does that help in the machine in cycles? Is that, does that mean you'll get maybe uh, you know less abrasiveness on the tools, you'll get less tool wear? So one of the things it benefits in is it allows the tool to run at the date that you program it. So rather than program it at like a high feed and not actually achieving that because of the look ahead of the controls and the, the, the acceleration and deceleration of the encoders, it's actually very good at reading the lines exactly how it should be. Ah, so basically if a cutting tool, if the strategy was to run at X yeah. and you programmed it at X on some machines, you might actually be running at X because the machine can't handle it. Yeah, exactly that. It slows it down to be able to read the program a little bit easier. Um, what's the machining cycle that you're doing here? and why is this a good combination of your cutting tools and the Herco machine? So we, for the purposes of the display, uh, we're using P20 tool steel, we're using dry machining, we're using solid carbide, which is using like high efficiency milling, and then we're also using high feed milling as well. So two different strategies that work along the same principle. Tell me briefly about both high efficiency and then the other. So high efficiency in machining is high metal removal rates using a trachoidal dynamic adaptive path method, many different names for the same method, but all based around the chip thinning process. So you use a higher feed, a lower depth of cut radially, and a big depth of cut axially, which allows us to use this method to remove lots of metal. And, and the efficiency comes in what, simply the metal removal and the speed of it? Yeah, so the metal removal rate, you have bigger benefits on tool life, because you're not using the, just the end of the tool, say the first three mil, using the full length, which gets the heat out in the chip. No, no heat really enters the tooling, so you get better tool life in that sense. Okay, so there was high efficiency, then there was one other you mentioned, what was that one? So the high feed machining. So again, working on chip thinning, you use low depth of cut axially, uh, big 10 to 20 to 60% radial engagement as well, to use different adaptive paths and methods to use. What, what, what's, is there not a disadvantage to not running without, uh, you're running dry here, aren't you? Is it just disadvantage, are you running dry? Yeah, we are running dry, just because the, the machine here doesn't have coolant in it, but it's also a better benefit in terms of getting the heat out. You don't get that hot, cold judder, which the tools really don't like, the thermal shocking of the hot and cold when you get coolant on. So if you're running at a nice, warm temperature, it's an even better for the tools. So it's a bit like, a, a, and forgive the analogy, a human jumping in a cold pool and then a hot pool, it affects the, 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 the stability of the body, doesn't it, or how the body reacts? Yeah, so carbide doesn't like hot cold or, or thermal shocking so that's what you're doing when you hot cold it's thermal shocking so will that give me better tool wear i mean it must be dependent on the materials you cut in and you and then obviously you must have to introduce these strategies in order to get the best out of it yeah so like your hrsa or heat resistant super alloys you wouldn't run them dry just because of the amount of the nature of how they perform on the heat so you use coolant with those situations and especially stainless steel as well certain uh, types of stainless steel you can get away with dry cutting but tend to always recommend with, with stainless and super alloys to always run wet. Tell me a little bit about then Dorma as a supplier of, of cutting tools. There is a lot of you out, I mean we're here at the Herco Open House, there's plenty of options available in this area. Yep. Um, why, do you, why do you feel that Dorma is uh, in a better position than maybe some of those competitors to offer a solution? We have a, a brilliant offering in terms of solid carbide, drills, taps, indexable turning, milling, drilling. So rather than just being able to offer one solution, we've got a broad range of products. And like I say we're, earlier, we work with Herco and they work with us.